Hello everyone and welcome to our lesson today on 13.7 normal distribution. So a normal distribution is just a frequency distribution where the mean, median, and mode all have the same value. So all those measures of central tendency line up right here at one value and in this case it would be 11. Now the data is evenly distributed about the mean. So everything on this side, okay, kind of mirrors everything on this side right here. And if we were to draw a histogram of all of this, so these bars right here would be a histogram, it would form this bell curve looking thing right here. Now the curve is symmetric and what that means is that the left side and the right side are mirror images of each other. All right, so here is an example of a normal distribution. Now, they can be all shapes and sizes. Okay, they can be lower like this. Uh, they can be even taller uh, like this. But these are a couple of their characteristics. All right, now many data sets are normally distributed. This is why it's important to learn this stuff. So intelligence quotients, or IQs, are normally distributed the height and weights of men and women, the life of batteries, so battery life, and wear out mileage of brakes. So to talk about a normal distribution, we have something called a z-score. And a z-score is the number of standard deviations a piece of data is away from the mean. So here we talked about the mean being right in the center. And we can call this uh, x bar right there. There's our mean. Now, the standard deviations away from the mean, okay, so if you go one standard deviation away, you're basically getting x bar plus one standard deviation. And so these are your z scores right here. If you were over here, this would be x bar plus two standard deviations. And so we just call this a z score of two. Now, if you're to the right, we make z-scores that are positive. And then if we're to the left, well, you would be taking the mean and subtracting a standard deviation. Therefore, we get a negative z-score. So to the left is going to be negative z-scores. To the right is going to be positive z-scores. Now here is the formula for finding a z-score of any data value. Okay, so let's just say we had a data value that was right here and we just call this x. So if we wanted to find the z-score that corresponds with x, we would take that number and subtract the mean. So notice now we're not going to use x-bar, but we're going to use mu. So we want to find that difference. And then we want to divide by the standard deviation. And so we are going to use theta here instead of our s. Okay, so it's x minus mu over theta. And so it's the piece of data minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And that's going to give you the z-score right here of that x value. Okay, so this one would be uh, between 1 and 2 somewhere. All right, next we want to talk about the area under the curve of the normal distribution. So the total area under the curve is 1, which corresponds to 100%. So you can see here we have this curve which has a pretty crazy formula, but all the area under here equals 1, which is going to be 100% of the area. Now the area does correspond to the percent of data that falls between two values. Okay, so if we're looking between a z-score of negative 1 and 1, all of this area is about 68% of the total area, and so 68% of the data values would fall between these two values. Now, to find these values, to find the percentages and the areas, we're going to use table 13.7. And the areas that are given in this table are between the mean and the absolute value of a z-score. Okay, so when you look at the table, it's going to give you the area between a z equals 0 and some positive z-score or basically between the mean and a z-score. 
Now, why doesn't it do negatives? Okay, well, if we're over here at a negative z-score, and this is the positive z-score, the area is going to be the same. Okay, so this area is going to equal this area because the curves are symmetrical. So if you're dealing with a negative z-score, just look up the positive z-score, and you're going to get the same positive area, right? Because area is always positive. Now, the way it works then is in a normal distribution, 50% or half of the data is below the mean. And here's what that looks like. So the mean, remember, is always at a z-score of 0, and everything to the left is 50%. And what that tells me is everything to the right is also going to be 0.5 for the area, or 50%. Now, a couple of other important places is that 68% of the data lies within one standard deviation of the mean. So if you're here at the mean and you go one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below, okay, these two values are going to give you 68% of the data. Now 95.5% of all the data lies within two standard deviations of the mean. So now if you have the mean and you go two standard deviations above and two standard deviations below, that's going to encompass about 95.5% of all of the data. Now if we go even further, all the way out to 3, you can see there's not a whole lot of missing data over here. Okay, so at 3, all this area is about 99.7%. So in our next examples, we're going to be looking at finding z-scores. Now remember, z-score is the number of standard deviations away from the mean. So given a population is normally distributed with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10, find the z-scores for the following pieces of data. So when we think about this, x equals 70 and the mean was 50. So uh, 70 is bigger than 50, our z-score has to be positive. So what we want to do here is find the z-score for 70. We just write z of 70. Now what this is, it's the piece of data minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So here we get 20 over 10. So this is 2. So 70 has a z-score of 2 and it would fall right here on the normal distribution. Now x equals 50. So we can use our formula again. z of 50 equals the piece of data 50 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Now here you can see we get 0 over 10. So the z-score of 50 is zero. Now that makes sense because if the mean is 50, the piece of data 50 is zero standard deviations away from the mean because it is the mean. Alright, piece of data now is 20. Let's find its z-score. So z of 20 equals the piece of data minus the mean over the standard deviation. Now here we get negative 30 over 10, which is negative 3. Now looking at these, if our z-score is positive, that means our piece of data is bigger than the mean. If our z-score is 0, that means our piece of data is the mean. And if our z-score is negative, that means the piece of data is smaller than the mean. So looking at 65, is this going to have a positive or a negative z-score? Well, 65 is bigger than 50, so I'm expecting a positive z-score. So let's see here. z of 65 equals 65 minus 50 over 10. We get 15 over 10, which is 1.5.
and we did expect a positive, and we got it there. This also shows you that your z-scores don't have to be whole numbers. They can be decimals as well. Now to find the percent of data between any two values, we just have a couple simple steps. Number one, you want to draw a diagram. So draw your little bell curve, right? And go ahead and label uh, your mean right here. And then figure out where you want to shade. So if it's you know just between two scores, you're just going to shade there. Then you want to find the z-scores if you have to and then label them. So you'd actually find the z-scores for these data values. And then find the area that corresponds with the z-scores in the chart. Okay, so you're gonna find area for each of the z-scores. And then you have to decide what to do with the areas based on your drawing to find the total area. Okay, so it depends how you draw it, what you do with these areas. Sometimes you add them together, sometimes you subtract them, sometimes you add to 0.5, uh, lots of different things. So let's talk a little bit now about the different ways we can see shadings. Okay, so the mean is right here, and we can label that as a z-score of zero. And we'll just pick any z-score out here. Now in this example, we really only have one piece of data. So here's the area we're looking for. Okay, so notice this is z sub 1, so it's our first z-score. And here's a sub 1, the area that corresponds to that z-score. Now in this case, all you have to do is look it up in the table and find it. Now our next one is between a negative and a positive z-score. Okay, so again, here's the mean, which is a z-score of 0. So a negative z-score will be over here. We'll just call this z sub 1. And here is its area. And I'll label this a sub 1. And then we'll also have another z-score. That'll be positive. And the area from the table will be over here. I'm going to call this a sub 2, corresponding with our second one. So if I want to find the total area here between a negative and a positive z-score, I'm going to add the two areas. Another example you might see is between two negative z-scores. So now we have a z-score here and another negative z-score here. Let's name them z sub 1 and z sub 2. So when you look for the areas, z sub 1 will actually give you an area from here to here. I'm not going to shade it in because we're not looking for that area. Notice we're looking for this area between the two z-scores. Okay, so your first z-score gives you this area from here to here. We'll call this a sub 1. Then your second z-score will give you this area. Now notice it always goes to the mean here. So from the mean to the z-score, this gives you area 2. So notice how these overlap right here. So if we want to find just this piece right here, we're going to have to subtract the two areas. So just go a sub 2 minus a sub 1. And that'll give you the area you're looking for. Now between two positive z-scores, kind of gives us the same situation. So here's our mean. And both our z-scores are on the same side of the mean. In this case, they're both positive. And here's the area we're looking for. Now z sub 1 is going to give you the area from the mean to the z-score. And the second one is going to 
would be right here. Let's call that a sub 2. So if we just want the shaded area in here, we're actually going to take a sub 2 minus a sub 1. So again, it's that idea that our two areas are overlapping. So if we just want this part, we're going to subtract the two areas. All right. Our next example is involving only one z-score now. And this is greater than a positive z-score. So here is 0 at our mean. And let's just say we have a positive z-score. And we want to find the percent of data that's greater than that value. So now we're looking for this little tail out here. So when you find in the table the area, remember you're finding it from the mean to the z-score. But that's not what we want. We want out here. So we have to think back to the fact that the area from the mean all the way to the right is actually 0.5, or half of the data. So if we want to find just this tail out here, in this situation, we're going to do 0.5 minus a sub 1. Now in a similar example, if we want less than a negative z-score, here's our 0, here's our negative z-score, and if we want less than, now we're talking this tail right out here. So again, we want to find our area for our z-score, but that gives me between 0 and our z-score. And we use the fact that everything to the left of the mean is 0.5. So taking 0.5 and subtracting area 1, we're getting the area we're looking for. So it's 0.5 minus a sub 1. So in both these cases, if you're looking for just the little tail, you're going to go 0.5 minus the area found in the table. Now the next example is greater than a negative z-score. So here's our negative z-score. Here's our mean. And if we want greater than, notice we're going to shade everything to the right. Now in this case, when we look up our z-score in our table, it's giving us this area from the mean to the z-score. There's a sub 1. But we have to include all of this other area, and the area from here to the right is 0.5. So in this case, when you're looking for this entire tail, so the big one, we're going to add the two areas together. It's going to be a sub 1 plus 0.5. In our next example, it's similar. So now we're less than a positive z-score. So here's a positive z-score. Here's our mean. And we want less than, so it's everything to the left. Now when we look up our area in our table, gives us between the mean and the z-score, and you guessed it, everything to the left is 0.5. So if we want our total area under the curve, again, we take the area, a1, plus 0.5. So these are all your possible scenarios. So that's why it's very important to sketch the diagram in the first place so that you can match it up with whatever you need if you have trouble knowing whether to subtract or add along the way. So now let's give a couple of these a try. It says sketch a drawing and find the specified area or percent of data. So the first one is between the mean and a z of 1.3. So we're just going to sketch a normal distribution here. Don't worry if your pictures aren't all that great right now. 
we just want to be able to get the general idea. So we draw our curve, and we put our mean in, we're going to put zero right there. Now 1.3 is going to be to the right of the mean. It doesn't even matter where you put it, just make sure it's to the right. Then we're going to shade the area we are looking for. So now what we want to do is find the area that corresponds with our z. And to do that, we're going to look in this chart right here. We need to find z of 1.3. So if we look here, we're going to find it right there. That's kind of funny here, the area is actually on the right side. So here's z of 1.3 has an area of 0 0.403. So go ahead and just find that area. And now we're going to analyze kind of what's going on here. Now remember our table gives us the area from the mean to the z-score, which is 0 0.403. And in this case, we don't have to do anything extra. So the percent of data here is actually 40.3%. Letter B. Here, it's between Z equals negative 0.56 and 1.21. So we'll draw our basic sketch here. We'll put our mean right here at zero. Now we have a negative one, so that's off to the left. And then we have a positive z-score, it's off to the right. I'm going to shade in what we're looking for. Now again, when we find our areas, it's always from the mean to the z-score. So let's look at z of negative 0.56. Now negative 0.56, we want to look at positive 0.56. And you can see it gives us an area of 0.212. So we're just going to record that in here. Okay, so our first area is 0.212. And now we want to find our second area it's from the mean to the z-score. I'm going to look up 1.21. You can see it's right here. Z of 1.21 gives an area of 0.387. Now I think this is the easiest example to find, and you can probably see what's going to happen. But looking at our last chart that we just did, you want to compare your sketch here. And you can see that this sketch and this sketch is the same. So it's between a negative and a positive z-score. So all we have to do here is add our two areas together. So the overall area is going to be 0 0.212 plus 0.387 is 0.599 and then we just change it to a percent. 59.9 percent. All right, moving on. Next we have between z equals 1.63 and z equals 2.47. So let's draw our sketch. Now in this case, both of them are positive, so they're both going to be to the right of the mean. So we'll just say 1.63 is here, and 2.47 is here, and we are looking for this area right there. So we're going to look up in our table for our first area. So 1.63 this is an area of 
You can draw it right there, or you can just write it off to the side. Now we're going to look for our second area. Okay, so z score of 2.47 has an area of 0.493. I think it's a little bit easier just to write it off to the side there, or you could write it right on top of this. Now in this case, if we look at our charts here, this is between two positive z-scores. And so when we have this sort of overlapping area on one side, we subtract the two. You don't have to worry too much to subtract uh, do the bigger one minus the smaller one. Okay, we get 0.044, which is 4.4 percent. We're going to jump down to below 1.86. So we're going to draw our curve. And our mean. 1.86 is above the mean. And we want below this. Usually when there's two sections on either side of the mean, I shade it like that. Now we look up our area for the one z-score that we have. So 1.86, actually up here. It's an area of 0.469. Now, uh, because we're looking for all of this area, we know that this is 0.5. And again, you can always turn to this sheet right here and match it up with the right sketch. So this sketch is the same as less than a positive z-score. You can see what we have here is our area plus 0.5. So that's just what we're going to do. 0.469 plus 0.5 and we get 0.969 which is 96.9 percent. All right and we're going to move across to F. So here we want above Z of 2.72. So here's our mean of 0. 2.72 is positive. So we're going to draw it off to the right. And we want above this. So we're going to shade everything to the right and we get this little tail. Next. We look in our charts for the area, so we find z of 2.72, and 2.72 is right here. It's an area of 0.497. It's from here to here. Now again, if we want to match this up with our chart, this one, to me, looks like this one. So greater than a positive z-score. Looks just like this. So we do need the 0.5 from here. It looks like we're going to subtract our area. And 
this gives me 0 0.003. And when we convert this to a percent, we move the decimal two to the right. We actually have 0.3% of the data. All right. I want you now to go ahead and finish up D, G, and H. We'll come back together in a few minutes, check your answers, and then I'm going to show you how you can use the calculator to find all these. So go ahead and take a look at your answers for D, G, and H. Let's see how you did. For D, you should have gotten 26.5%. For G, 64.4%. And H, 12.5%.